too happy with me right now. I can tell. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. got smacked in the head. See, they're never done till they're done. We're gonna try to do something a little bit different this week. On this sportsman's adventure, I'm gonna try to show you the how-tos about tarpon fishing, bait fishing for tarpon. Now, whether you're at Flamingo, you're in Port Charlotte, fishing off of Jupiter Inlet, or any of the bridges in the Florida Keys, the one thing that all of these places have in common when it comes to bait fishing is one, how you approach the area, two, what you do when you do find the fish. Three, maybe what you use for bait. But the key is, all of these places in the summertime, because it's a tropical-oriented fish, you gotta get up early. And that's what we're doing today on this Sportsman's Adventures. Hey, one of the things that's really, really important is you gotta get up early because the water temperature's warm and this time of year, in July, late June, July, and August, I like using pinfish for bait. And the reason why I like using a pinfish is because a pinfish is pretty hardy bait. It's real accessible. It's not like a mullet that has to migrate into the area in the spring and the fall. So those are the couple of key things. Now, when I come out here to catch these pinfish, I use a sabiki. And the reason why is because if you use throw a net on these fish, not to say that they won't work, they certainly will, but it's, if I find that they're a lot more hardy and I can use them, if I keep them for two or three days, I can use them uh, by not knocking the scales off of them by throwing a cast net on them. A sabiki, you can catch five or six at a time. One of the key things to fishing a sabiki for pinfish, put a chum bag over, that chums them into the area, then you sit there and you throw a little piece of squid on each one of the uh, sabikis. That baits it, gives it smell. And I use the squid antennas. It's a lot tougher. It's the toughest part of the squid. And it'll stay on there for four or five different times of fishing. So that's a couple keys. Oh, there he is right there. Another one right here. We're slowly starting to get into him. It's real important that you, when you're using your trolling motor, that you use your trolling motor, one, at a speed where you're not changing the pitch. Don't be rotating the speed or changing the speed. Put it on a speed. This particular motor right now I got, it's a 12 volt Minn Kota, and I got it on just below 50. Have, take your time, get there. If you run in there wide open, the boat starts making noise, it's gonna spook the fish. Use a trolling motor to your advantage. Don't make it something that's a disadvantage. There's another little slick spot in my ripple. That fish roll right there. Now when you get the bite, you just roll. Oh, oh, there he is. Jumped off, I think. Nope, I still got him. Make sure you bow whenever you get a tarpon on. It's real important that you bow because that's when they'll break the line. See, if you do things right, be quiet, careful, you'll end up hooking this fish right away. I got a real mess starting to occur here. Oh boy, we're all right, I got it. Put this one here, this one here. Whoa, there we go. Coming up for a jump, bow. Give him as much slack as you can. Now, the key, if you're little kids, fishing your kids or your wife, really important that it's comfortable for them. So, these big rods, put the fish is under the boat, we're gonna put the rod tip all the way down in the water. Reel with the rod tip in the water till he comes back out this side. Very, very important. 
that you clear all the stuff. We're clear. Now the other thing too is make sure that when you pump, kids, ladies, wind down and lift up. Don't try to pump the fish. Don't try to worry about the fish. Wind down and lift. You rest. Oh, hopefully he doesn't jump coming out the other side. I'll never trim the motor up. And if you ever get in trouble, just go slack. The line never breaks. Look, he's still on. The line won't break if it's tight. So remember that, snook fishing around a dock, you get in trouble, go slack. The fish generally relaxes a little because you're not pulling on him, he's not worried. And for your kids, remind them to wind the rod tip down. Wind, there's a jump, bow. Wind down, lift up. Ladies, it's real important. You guys are, you know, we're not as strong as the men and even men, you know. For the little kids, one of the things I do with my little boys, they use the same rods I use. They use the braided line or they use 20 pound test. I have an eight year old and a five year old and they'll catch this fish. They can come out and catch this 60 pound tarpon, not a problem. The key is that I, they'll put the rod between their legs like this. Well, that can be painful. What I do is I either take a koozie and put it over the rod, but a foam koozie, or I'll turn around and take a towel and wrap that towel around the rod butt. And by so doing that, what ends up happening is it becomes comfortable for them and they don't have to worry about the rod butt putting a big hole in a place where it doesn't belong. All right, well, let's catch this guy. He looks like he's about done. Nice little 60 pounder. I grab my leader, put my rod butt right here. That circle hooks exactly where he's designed to be. He's not too happy with me right now. I can tell. Oh, 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 got smacked in the head. See, they're never done till they're done. Get me all wet, trying to be nice to the fish and not drag him out of the water. And he did that to me, not nice. All right. Let me get this hook out of him if I can. He's being pretty polite right now. Oh. Come on, fish. Now remember, the temperature, the water temperature, according to that hummingbird right there, is 88 degrees. You know, be careful with these fish because they're really fragile when it's hot like this. Try not to bring them out of the water if you don't have to. Plus, they'll give you a bloody lip. They'll soak you, beat you like the dog that you are. But the bottom line is we're out here having fun. And that circle hook really did the trick. Hooked right there in the corner of his mouth, just like you're supposed to. Gonna jump. There's a nice big jump. Sportsman's Adventures is brought to you by Florida, the fishing capital of the world. Yamaha, when you want the best. Rapala, your best shot at a world record. Rapala Line, premium fishing line crafted from experience. Maverick, fish the legend. Minn Kota, anywhere, anytime. Hummingbird, simply, clearly, better. Almost 1,200 miles of coastline.
12,000 miles of rivers and streams, nearly 8,000 lakes over 10 acres, over 700 world records, and 3.4 million anglers a year. In fact, anglers outnumber golfers two to one. Whether you're casting a plug along the shore or trolling the blue waters of the Gulf Stream, you're enjoying a vast outdoor resource. Relax, get closer to nature, and spend time with friends and family. Go fishing, right here in the fishing capital of the world. Yamaha's Big Block V6 Four Strokes. Everything you want when you're miles offshore. Everything and more. Up to 250 ocean conquering horses. More than enough top end muscle to move the big boats. Yamaha Turn the Key Reliability translates to confident starts, quiet, clean burning performance, smooth, powerful acceleration, and cruise all day fuel efficiency. Yamaha, reliability starts here. You know, I fish all over the world in over 300 days a year on the water. And as a matter of fact, I spend more time on the water than on dry land. If it swims in salt water, I catch it. Out here, where the fish are big and mean, your lures really take a beating. To survive, they must be tougher than the fish you are. Backcountry to blue water, my choice in lures is simple. All over the world, big fish eat little fish that swim like a rapala. It takes a little more to make it out here. It's about guts, standing up to the elements, and quietly doing the job when others have long gone home. It takes Riptide, the toughest, most corrosion-resistant trolling motor ever built. When your reputation's on the line, hang it on Riptide, only from Minn Kota. I fish tournaments to win, period. And my boat helps me do that. I gotta run longer, faster, harder than anyone else. Day after day, every day. My Hughes is designed by anglers that actually build boats to do that. These guys are driven. If they can satisfy my needs, they can satisfy yours. So, who's gonna build your next gift? Maverick, Hughes, Pathfinder, flat skiffs, tunnel skiffs, and bay boats. Maverick Boat Company, angler driven. Well, welcome back, and I tell you what's gonna happen is uh, we're over here on the west coast of Flamingo in case you missed the first couple minutes of the show, and I gotta say, the tarpon fishing is red hot. There's tarpon rolling all over the place just off of this shoreline here, and I gotta say, we should be able to catch a really big one, some real big ones here. There's one, he wants to be a movie star, so just blew up on the water. The current now is going this way, and I want to explain to you how I'm setting everything up. The end of the current's going this way. School of fish is right here in front of me. I'm going to go out and around them slowly or get to where if one rolls real close by, I can throw this bait to them. But nevertheless, I know my baits are going to drift down this way, so it doesn't do any good to have the fish here and your baits drifting that way. You have to be up current of your baits, otherwise your bait and the fish, the tarpon, won't be together. So that makes a lot of sense. Same thing applies. If you're fishing a bridge down in the Florida Keys, a lot of you guys go down there to fish the tarpon migration in April and May. Get up current of where you see the majority of the fish rolling, drop your anchor over, put your power pole down, use your push pole to stake out, whatever your means of stopping the boat up current of the fish, and then throw your baits out. You want to throw your baits out 90 degrees. Also, check your depth recorder. Check the depth recorder to see what the depth is so you know what to set the bobbers at, as well as you want to know water temperature. The hotter the water temperature, the deeper you want the baits to go. There he is, a big man. A man in a silver suit. Now, this is one of the reasons why you use a clicker drag. The reason why I like using it is I can get the bite or I can go into the cooler and hand my son the rod, an eight-year-old or a nine-year-old boy, and not have to worry about my rod getting yanked out of the boat. And then all he's got to do is know that if he pushes that lever, the fish is going to hook himself. And that's the beautiful thing about circle hooks. Just come tight. Get ready to jump. There's a jump. Nice 120 pound fish jumping. 
Now, one of the things that you might do now in this particular case, I don't want to do it because I don't want to disturb the area. And plus I feel like I'm capable of catching this fish without having to chase him down. But if you're with your wife or you got one of your sons or your daughter has this fish on and this fish is leaving the country, then what you want to do is go ahead and chase him down with your motor. In this particular case, we could use our Minn Kota, keep it quiet. Uh-oh, something happened here. It's coming at the boat. Gonna have to go into this other rod. Wow, gets interesting. Bow to him if he jumps. But anyway, you could chase the fish down. He's gonna jump here in a second. Lifting up on his head to try to make him jump. The other thing too is a daddy or as an angler, you wanna watch the angle of the rod. Now watch, I'm gonna teach you how to fight these big fish. You're seeing real time TV. We're not editing out the time it takes to catch this fish. This is actually right now so far exactly a bit this fish has been on about six minutes no more let me see i got i got issues here we got trolling motors and we got push poles now you see i didn't try to keep pulling i went to my trouble and went ahead and cleared the trouble once i cleared the trouble then I go back to pulling on the fish. You gotta remember, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, you got to remember if you get into trouble, you get around an outboard motor, you get around a push pole, around a trolling motor, loosen the rod down, slack line won't break if it's not tight. And you gotta remember that. When you go to pull on the fish, I like to form a triangle between my arms and my body. This is what I'm doing right here so that I'm not, one, hurting my back, I'm not hurting my bicep by having my arm bent like this, and I take this and put it in a situation, put the rod butt so that I form a tripod or a triangle. This is what's going to allow me to put a lot of pressure on this fish, okay? Run to the back so we don't get in trouble. Always face your problems head on. Ralph Delf taught me that a long time ago, and it applies for everything, including your fishing. If you got a problem, go to it. Don't wait till it's a problem. If you see it possibly being a problem, you're standing on the front, and you see him headed for the back, and your first thought process is, hey, he might run around the back of the boat. Hey, go to the back of the boat. Be back there and with a welcoming committee for when he gets back there. Gonna jump. There's a nice big jump. The key is though, when you're pulling on the fish, I don't wanna see the rod like this, a big bend in the tip. Nothing's happening there. The meat of the rod, the fat part of the rod, needs to be what's pulling on the fish. So how do you do it so that you're pulling on the rod the right way? How do you pull on the rod? I tell my anglers, try to keep one, the rod between you and the fish. And number two, try to keep the three or four tip guides so that they're straight. All right, let's put this in the rod holder. A little short guy like me can walk right under it. We're still fishing out the back. Come up to the front. Don't you go under that push pole, boss. There we go. And the key is to pull from the fat part of the rod. When the fish jumps a lot, he's exerted a lot of energy. You never see a guy who's just run 200 meters and hurdles get ready to run a marathon. A marathon guy paces himself. When the fish jumps a lot, that's when you need to really pull on him because that's when he has exerted a lot of energy. There's a bunch of lactic acid right now built up in that fish. There's a nice head jump for you. And now I'm gonna really pull on him. And then always pull down the fish's back. It's no different than trying to woe a horse, okay? And always try to lay that leader right down his back. If he's going to the left, 
I'm gonna pull to the right. If he's going to the right, I'm gonna pull to the left. And there's the mouth. Only a mother could love right there. Being I'm gonna boat this fish by myself, I think what we'll do is I'm gonna wear him down just a tad more. Normally, as a guide right now, you as a father, what you'd wanna do is be reaching for the leader. Give your little boy, your little girl, or your wife a break. They've been really pulling on the fish. Okay, the fish is still just a little green. Now, when the fish lays on his side like that, mouth open, we're done. He's done. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can grab this little guy. This Conservation Minute is brought to you by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. When you hear the term exotic species, you probably think of something extraordinarily beautiful and appealing, but that's not always the case. An exotic is any plant or animal species introduced from another country, and it's illegal in the state of Florida to introduce any exotic species into the state. Having few natural predators, parasites, or diseases, exotics often outcompete natives and significantly change natural ecosystems. Well-meaning pet owners mistakenly believe they are doing the right thing by releasing unwanted pets into the natural environment. It is not the right thing to do. In fact, it is cruel to release exotic fish and wildlife into an alien environment. The animals must now compete in a world that is entirely unfamiliar and for which they may not be adapted. Most importantly, it's illegal. Let's keep Florida's environment natural. For more information, visit myfwc.com. Contender Boats, take it to the limit. Wherever you find fishing tournament winners, you'll find Contender Boat owners. First to the fishing grounds, first to the winner's circle. When you look for strength, versatility, and ocean ability, you find Contender Boats, hand built, one by one, each and every boat. Contender Boats is proud to introduce its new 23 Tournament Edition, the latest in true mid-sized offshore fishing rigs. Contender is committed to providing outstanding quality and performance. Nothing else delivers. Expect the most, Contender Boats. If you're a boater, you know it's required by law to carry at least one life jacket for every passenger on board. Maybe you're thinking, I can swim, I don't need a life jacket. Consider that the leading cause of death in boating accidents is drowning, even though 96% of fatality victims were reported as being able to swim. New inflatable models of life jackets can be worn as a waist pack on a belt. For more information about life jackets and boating safety, visit myfwc.com. And remember, safe boating is up to you. Wouldn't it be great if you could snap on a lure and just go fishing? With something that looks like, and more importantly, swims like the real thing. With lures that come pre-rigged with the best components available. With baits designed by people who fish all over the world. But most importantly, you tie these on your line, you're going to catch some fish. Humminbird 900 series will change the way you look at fishing. You get the extra dimension of 3D sonar, full chart plotting and GPS, and exclusive side imaging with a picture-like view of the bottom, all on an ultra-wide, high-definition display. The 900 series fishing system doesn't just perform on the water, it practically walks on it. Humminbird, simply, clearly, better. Yamaha's Big Block V6 Four Strokes. Everything you want when you're miles offshore. Everything and more. Up to 250 ocean conquering horses. More than enough top end muscle to move the big boats. Yamaha Turn the Key Reliability translates to confident starts, quiet, clean burning performance, smooth, powerful acceleration, and cruise all day fuel efficiency. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Where else can you fish for over 50 species of game fish? Where have most world record fish been caught? Where are there more than 8,000 miles of coastline, 12,000 miles of rivers and streams, and 3 million acres of freshwater lakes and ponds? Florida, the fishing capital of the world. For more information, contact the commission office nearest you or go to myfwc.com. 
right, here we go. Let's see if we can grab this little guy. Uh, now this is the part you gotta be careful of. Whenever you grab a tarpon, I recommend do it with your hands, but you wanna probably try it with a pair of gloves. You know, my hands are so beat up from all the years of pulling, I think it, uh, it doesn't really seem to bother mine too much, even though I'll get banged here pretty, pretty good, probably. There we go. Now, when the fish is shaking like this, don't try to pull him out of the water, because truthfully, you're only gonna hurt yourself. If you wanna take a picture, you got your little boy, your little girl, your wife, it's the first fish, or maybe an old buddy of yours that you're fishing with, go ahead and grab him. <clears throat> Well, I was gonna try to show you how to bring him up out of the water. The good, th the big thing is don't use a lip gaff. It pokes a hole in that membrane and it's really not good for that fish. When he comes up and rolls, that water, the oxygen he's trying to take in, it gets out. I hope that you learned a few things. Thanks for watching Sportsman's Adventures. If you have any other questions, we're gonna have some tarpon tips. All of these little things that we talked about, I'll put them up on the website and you can go to it and see exactly what we were talking about. The bait, the rig, how to uh, anchor up above the current of the fish, use your trolling motor quietly, check the water temperature on your hummingbird. All of those little things are the key to being stealth when tarpon fishing. Thanks again for tuning in.